is in my opinion as negative as of other reviewers. Is the RTX 4060 Ti really that bad of a graphics card as many say? Today I'll try to find, talk and discuss about the good and bad aspects of this mid-range GPU by Nvidia. Meaning I'll be running tests at two different resolutions and needless to say we'll also measure the total power consumption both at full load and while gaming. To be exact I'll be checking out the PNY XLR8 Verdo Epic X RGB version of the RTX 4060 Ti. Price. In October 2023, we're looking at about 440 to 460 US dollars for the 8 gigabyte version. So that's about what we realistically used to pay for the predecessor 3060 Ti back then. The 4060 Ti can also be had with 16 gigabytes of VRAM though, but it comes in at a premium. Is this graphics card worth buying? Let's do a quick side-by-side -side comparison, also including the predecessor 3060 Ti. In addition to the new architecture, we also see the more advanced 5 nanometer process on the 4060 Ti. Both cards come with 8GB of GDDR6 video memory when going for the standard version. However, the 4060 Ti has a bus width of only 128 bits, on paper still achieving the higher memory speed though. At a TTP of only 160 watts, the latest model should not only be easier to cool, but also be much more power efficient. What I find to be a bit of a bummer is that Nvidia still isn't fully up to date as far as their video outputs are concerned. While the current latest AMD Radeon lineup already sports DisplayPort version 2.1 ports, in the Nvidia camp we're still stuck with version 1.4a. Well, that sure is a bummer. Now here are a few words on this specific PNY design. The aesthetics are kept fairly simple. It's a bit surprising how long it is given the fact it's a mid-range card. We are talking of about 305mm in length. Aside from that, it's a fairly usual dual slot graphics card that should easily fit into most PC cases out there. While this card comes with an aesthetically pleasing and stabilizing metal backplate, the remainder of the card, the shroud, is made of plastic but the build quality leaves a good impression. The manufacturer also equipped their pixel accelerator with some fancy RGB lighting, for which effects and further fine-tuning are provided using PNY's own Velocity X software. If you're not into RGB, you can simply disable all the lighting. Three fans and that amount of aluminum might be a bit overkill for a GPU of this caliber. Of course, this also means that the card can operate very quietly and that's something I can certainly confirm. Even during long gaming sessions, PNY's 4060 Ti remains virtually inaudible. In addition to that, the fans are operated semi-passively out of the box, meaning they only spin up when cooling is required. You could also switch to active cooling in the aforementioned Velocity X software along to custom fan curves and whatnot. The software also offers some clock speed monitoring and also has that automatic overclocking scan implemented, which we are not using today. Only a single 8-pin PCIe power connector is required. Test setup. Tests will be carried out with my new test system I've set up for GPU reviews. The CPU I'm using is the Intel Core i9-13900K set to its fixed 253 watt power limit. Motherboard, the ASRock Z790 Tai Chi, RAM, 32GB DDR5 6000MHz, CL36 of the Kingston Fury Beast RGB type. Clock speeds. Out of the box, I'm reading out an average GPU clock of 2745MHz. I would like to explicitly point out that an RTX 4060 Ti is not operated in PCIe 4.0 x16 mode, but only has 8 active lanes. The bandwidth with just 8 lanes is sufficient, no question. In the end, however, for older systems with PCIe 3 Pro slots, that means in the worst case scenario, you could lose 5 to 10% of performance. Now that's not the end of the world, but not ideal either, when considering that such a GPU would probably be seen as a halfway decent upgrade solution for many systems out there with slightly outdated graphics cards. Performance gaming. First of all, I would like to make it clear that I actually kinda stepped back from GPU reviews and am making a small comeback here today. 
I certainly would have liked including more GPUs in my charts, particularly an RX 7700 XT by AMD, maybe sometime in the future. Well, starting off with the brand new game title Assassin's Creed Mirage. Today we'll only be testing it full HD, 1080p and 1440p. The RTX 4060 Ti on average performs 18% better than the 3060 Ti and even 21% better at 1440p. However, in Borderlands 3 the gap is getting smaller, the 4060 Ti only being ahead by 13% and 8% at 1440p. The result in the title Cyberpunk 2077 is disappointing. Here the 4060 Ti only performs 7% better than its predecessor at 1080p and by increasing the resolution we almost see a draw. Things don't look any better in Far Cry 6. The 4060 Ti is just 1% faster than the 3060 Ti and is even equally as fast at 1440p. If you look closely, the predecessor even offers the slightly higher 1% lows. Things are looking much better in Forza Horizon 5 again. Here a 4060 Ti performs 12 or 14% better than its predecessor. Horizon Zero Dawn. Now here you are 13 or 8% ahead of the 3060 Ti and generally see a pretty decent result. There are even nicer performance uplifts measurable in Metro Exodus. The 4060 Ti holding a 14% higher frame rate at 1080p compared to the 3060 Ti, but only a gain of 8% at 1440p can be witnessed. I sure was a bit disappointed that this trend carried on even in Red Dead Redemption 2. At 1080p we are seeing a performance increase of around 13%, at 1440p only 7% compared to the 3060 Ti. Finally, in Shadow of the Tomb Raider, yet again a comparable FPS gain of around 14%. That's once again a jump of 8% at the 1440p resolution. Gaming average FPS of the 9 games tested. All in all, without making use of assisting features such as DLSS and FSR, with the 4060 Ti we are talking of an average performance uplift of just 10-11% at Full HD over the 3060 Ti. That's only slightly over 8% if 1440p is your desired resolution. So the results sure are a bit disappointing to say the least. But what does this say about the gaming performance in general? The 4060 Ti is ideal for Full HD 1080p gaming, yet I'm not sure whether this can be still be crowned an achievement in 2023 at a price of well over $400, especially when keeping in mind what the predecessor is capable of performance wise. Smooth 1440p gaming simply cannot be guaranteed for all game titles out there, especially not when trying to factor in future games in 2 to 4 years from now, although that's generally always hard to say. Now let's use the respective upscaling technologies such as DLSS and FSR. In Assassin's Creed Mirage there is now an advantage of 18% and an impressive 21% gain to be witnessed over the 3060 Ti. As is well known, the 4060 Ti features DLSS 3. This feature is very prominent as far as Nvidia's marketing goes and the big advantage of it is finally shown in a realistic scenario. Cyberpunk 2077 does a great job of implementing DLSS 3 and allows the 4060 Ti to perform an incredible 58% better at 1080p than the 3060 Ti and 1440p not much less at 57%. This way you quickly catapult yourself into the high-end GPU tier, keeping up really well with Nvidia's RTX 3090 and RX 6900 XT by AMD. Unfortunately, that much of a groundbreaking result is not achieved in Far Cry 6, which may be due to the fact that the game only supports upscaling via FSR. Nonetheless, we are still ahead of the 3060 Ti by 12 or a very respectable 26% at 1440p. Horizon Zero Dawn. Nice and usable frame rates are achieved. So here we are 29% faster at 1080p and 21% faster at 1440p than the 3060 Ti with the same graphic settings. Not bad. The 4060 Ti also impresses in Red Dead Redemption 2 when having DLSS enabled and is 24% and 14% ahead of the 3060 Ti respectively. Having arrived in the last game title, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, with RTX DLSS enabled I could of course only take that walk with Nvidia GPUs only. 
at 1080p, the 4060Ti brings almost 22% higher FPS to the table over the 3060Ti, a bit less with 17% at 1440p. In general, as far as DLSS and FSR are concerned, today's 4060Ti basically performs a lot better than I had initially expected throughout various game titles. Now before we get to the finale, there's one more gaming test, and that is ray tracing. In Cyberpunk 2077, for instance, I was shocked at how poorly the AMD RX 6000 series performs compared to even much less powerful Nvidia GPUs. But even the RTX 4060 Ti hardly manages a significant gain in frame rate over the 3060 Ti unless DLSS is used to make up for it. However, ray tracing seems to have been implemented much better in the game Forza Horizon 5. Not only do those AMD GPUs now offer really respectable ray tracing performance, but the 4060 Ti also stands out more from its predecessor. In fact, the 4060 Ti is doing about 14% better at 1080p and 11% better at 1440p. Productivity. For the sake of completeness, I didn't want to fully exclude this testing area either. In Blender Open Data, for instance, today's 4060 Ti doesn't deliver exactly bad performance. It is a mere 16% behind the RTX 3080 and a whopping 35% ahead of the 3060 Ti. In Octane Bench, with and without ray tracing, the 4060 Ti and 3060 Ti perform very similarly. The more recent Nvidia GPU is only minimally ahead. However, things look different in the V-Ray 5 GPU benchmark. When running the regular CUDA test, we only see a lead of 13%, but with ray tracing, we get a 34% increase in performance. Power consumption and temperatures. One of the highlights I can name for the RTX 4060 Ti is undoubtedly its very low power consumption. At full load, at which I specifically only put the GPU under 100% load, the GPU draws even less power than a regular RTX 3060 non-Ti does. We see the same picture when measuring the power consumption while gaming. Now before some of you get upset and shocked, this is the power draw of the entire system, measured directly from the wall. Without a doubt, today's 4060 Ti is the most efficient one out of the bunch, and that's certainly very much appreciated given the high electricity prices over here in Europe nowadays. As far as temperatures are concerned, I can say that everything's fine. The max I could read out was 77 degrees Celsius at full load. The fans only tend to spin at low RPM numbers and actually are virtually inaudible for my standards. If you were to run a more aggressive fan curve, you could easily knock the temperature down by at least 10 degrees. Conclusion. So how do I feel about the 4060 Ti? Well, actually, I have mixed feelings. Starting with the negative. I find 8GB of VRAM to be far too little for the mentioned price. The community is almost literally screaming for 10 or 12GB and Nvidia apparently doesn't want to listen and cater to the wishes of their customers. Even though 8GB may be sufficient in many current cases, there are already exceptions out there. Nvidia does offer us a way out by allowing us to instead buy the 16GB version of the 4060 Ti, but that only comes at a hefty premium. That leads us to the next point, and that is the price. In general, I think it's set way too high. Quite clearly, we are dealing with a graphics card intended for Full HD 1080p gaming again. I personally see no innovation when it comes to raw performance. For years, we have been paying give or take the same amount of money or even more for the same 1080p card, all with the excuse of said card coming with additional features. At that price point, it would be much more appropriate if it were a definite 1440p GPU with real serious performance headroom for the future. In most cases, the 4060 Ti doesn't set us apart much from the 3060 Ti released in 2020, sometimes not at all. But now to the positive. There are actually are moments in which the 4060 Ti brings major improvements using DLSS and even FSR, but I wouldn't really rely on it in the long term to be on the safe side. It kinda depends on the game title, really. However, I undoubtedly love the extremely low power consumption. That's great. Overall, the 4060 Ti can be recommended, but from a purely technical point of view, I don't see any real progress or noteworthy improvements over its predecessor. 
However, the port partner, the AIB PNY, has made the best out of this situation, and with their XLR8 Verdo design, therefore at least offers us great cooling and pleasant quiet fan operation. With that said, thank you very much for watching, until the next one.